So last week we talked about um, fossil fuels and combustion and how we could tell how much energy we were getting out of a combustion reaction. So remember we do a balanced chemical equation and we'd use all of the information in our data booklet to do Hess's law and that would give us the reaction energy and that would give us, if we divided by the moles of fuel, the molar heat uh, of reaction for that particular kind of fuel. Um, we're going to be doing something similar with nuclear reactions, but before we talk about that, we kind of have to get back into what an atom actually is, how it's set up. So, three kinds of materials inside of an atom. We've got obviously the nucleus that's uh, populated by protons, which have a positive charge, and neutrons, which have a neutral charge, a charge of zero. Um, neutrons, you can think of as kind of the glue inside of an atom. Uh, what I mean by that is, if you look at what else, what else is inside the nucleus, we've got protons. And this seems a little bit weird, and it really is. How is it that there's all these positive charges just st stuck in a big clump together? Uh, and why don't they just push away from each other? Why don't they just electrostatically repel? Because remember, positive things don't want to be around positive things. They want to push away from and avoid positive things charges that are their neighbors. So neutrons are kind of the glue that allows the nucleus to stick together. The number of protons determines what atom we are talking about. So the atom here, and this is a Bohr model of an atom, uh, this atom has six protons. So if we go into our data booklet or our periodic table, we find that the kind of atom that has uh, six protons, that would be element number six, which is carbon. So this is a carbon atom, Beca literally straight up because it's got six protons. If it had five protons, it would not be carbon. If it had seven protons, it would not be carbon. So the proton number for any given element never changes. Every single atom of carbon in the entire universe, six protons. Any nucleus that's got six protons is carbon. But what can change is the number of neutrons. And so the amount of glue can change. And that can, uh, it won't change what atom we're talking about, however, uh, it can make atoms unstable, which we're going to talk about in the next video. So there needs to be a way to explain what's going on in a nucleus. What, like what the situation inside here is without drawing every bloody nucleus. And there is, it's called isotope or nuclear notation. It's really simple. So here I have an atom. This is an atom of carbon. We can see that because the, the symbol is C. Up top, we have what's called the atomic mass, and below, we have what's called the atomic number. The atomic number and the atomic symbol are always going to be matching. So that means I'm just looking at my periodic table here. If I've got an atom of phosphorus, that's element number 15. <clears throat> so whenever I did, whenever I would write phosphorus, it would have to be capital P, because that's our symbol for phosphorus, and then a 15 in the bottom left corner. Again, that tells us how many protons there are. Oops. The top number is the atomic mass. I know that in your periodic table, the mass of carbon is 12.01. That weird decimally number is an average of all of the uh, atoms of carbon in a given sample. Most of the carbon atoms in the universe are what we call carbon 12. So what carbon 12 would look like on our isotope or nuclear notation, it would be C for carbon, six because it's got six proton and then the 
top corner number, top left corner, will change. So in this piece of carbon, or this particular carbon atom, there's going to be six proton, and there will be six neutrons. In this guy over here, since it's carbon 14, we still have six protons. If that wasn't the case, remember, it would not be carbon anymore. But we've got 14 total nuclear particles. In other words, there's 14 things in the nucleus. So all we need to do in order to find out how many neutrons this one has, 14 minus six. That means that we have eight neutrons in this atom. So if you had a piece of, let's say, pure carbon, maybe it's your pencil lead and it's like, that's a piece of graphite, which is pure carbon. Uh, almost all of the carbon in that piece of pencil lead is carbon 12, but a very, very tiny amount is carbon 14. And that kind of tips the scale a little bit, and that's the reason for the 12.01. If you're like, well, where does the 01 come from? This carbon's mass is exactly 12.00. This carbon's mass is exactly 14.00. Or very, very close to that. I'm not going to spill the beans on that until we talk about uh, e equals mc squared. But suffice it to say that if some of the carbon is a little bit heavier, it's going to move the average. It'll make, it a, make the average a little bit higher. So when you look in your periodic table and you see all these um, isotopes or these, uh, sorry, these atomic masses, like zinc is 65.41 and, you know, chromium is 52 and iron's 55.85. When you see weird decimals, it's because there are multiple flavors or multiple isotopes of these elements. And since they're all a little bit different in their mass, it messes with the average mass. So how would we ask you to do this in a question? Well, really simple. We could say something like, okay, write the isotope notation for silver 111. How many neutrons do we have? This is a very, very easy question. All you need is your periodic table. You can use the one in your data booklet, or you can use the one in your um, uh, textbook. That's fine, don't, don't care. So write the isotope notation for silver 111. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna worry about the silver part. So I need to go find silver, and I just so happen to have the symbol for sim, uh, silver memorized. And it's, oh, I know it's in the 40s. Uh, okay, it's 47. So that means that since silver is element number 47, we write our chemical symbol AG, we write our protons number 47. Since this is silver 111, we put the mass number up top. So we've written the isotope notation for silver 111. 111 up top, 47 down below. Remember 47 is the number of protons in silver. It's literally just what element number is it? And the mass is gonna be protons plus neutrons. So if I wanna find out how many neutrons, first of all, I know there's 47 protons and I'm gonna find out how many neutrons. How do I do that? If this is protons and neutrons, I subtract the number of protons. And that ends up being, uh, where is my calculator? I could probably do it by hand, 70, 64. Let's find out. One eleven minus forty seven, sixty four. Okay, cool. I do know how to do math. So sixty four. 
So that means that this silver atom, this specific silver atom, has 47 protons and 64 neutrons. We'll do the same deal for uranium-233. So I go find uranium in my periodic table. That's element number 92, and the symbol is U. So U with a 92 at the bottom. This part's never going to change for uranium. As soon as you read the word uranium, it's got to be a capital U, 92 in the bottom, and then 233 goes up top. The number up top is always going to be the big number. The number down in the corner is always going to be smaller, regardless. So I do 233 minus 92, that gives me 141. So that means that an atom of uranium-233 has 92 protons in it and 141 neutrons. So that's very, very simple. There will be a couple of isotope notation questions in your question pack for this week.